now cross over to Port Harcourt, the River State capital, where we are going to be in conversation with the Commissioner for Information, that's Joe Johnson, as uh, we are going to discuss the developments as we've seen them today. Good afternoon. A very warm welcome to the program, uh, Joe Johnson. Let's get straight into it. Of course, we have seen your release pertaining to the events that took place this morning as we all woke up to the sights and sounds of bulldozers at the State House Assembly. Uh, as we, many of us have been privy to the press release, can you give us more detail uh, about the report from the engineers uh, that you say, well, from the professionals that you say said that uh, the complex failed an integrity test and so the entire complex has to be demolished in order for it to be rebuilt so that it can be safe enough for lawmakers? Mm. Well, so what was the question? Where are we? Yeah, my question is, what were, the, what were the findings of the report that led to the entire complex? We understand that even areas that were not affected by the fire incident are also being bulldozed. What were the details of that report that led to the decision to bulldoze the entire complex? You, you rec I'm happy that I'm talking um, before the camera of uh, Arise which is a sister organization to this day. Um, and sometime before 2015, I had an office in Abuja, somewhere they call Abubakar Crescent. Your, your, the this day's office in Abuja is directly opposite Jabi Park. I was in the office one afternoon when there was an explosion in that complex. The impact of that complex, the impact on that complex and the surrounding structures around it made that place uh, uh, not fit for human uh, use. So I can imagine that what happened also at uh, the River State House of Assembly on the 29th of October, the impact from the assessment of consultants who went to, to assess the, the level of damage also had shown that uh, it had failed integrity tests. And the first duty of every government is to protect lives and property. And in this case, it will not be fair to continue to allow people risk their lives in the guise of uh, lawmaking. So I, I want to think that uh, this decision is the best because I'm sure that anybody who is honest about the situation in that assembly will know that a structure that is in use for more than 20 years had never had proper routine maintenance is capable of uh, causing mayhem. So when this incident happened, it was a call to duty for His Excellency to say, okay, look, let me bring it down and in a very short period put, put a, a, a befitting edifice. Well, there's, we certainly hear you on that. There's speculation, you know, in, from various camps or analysts or based on, you know, the reasons behind this complete demolition. But you've narrated that for the sake of transparency, should we expect to probably see any documentation to actually demonstrate that this building w did fail the integrity test in its entirety, like you've narrated? Well, if you're talking about documents, it's not far-fetched, it's not rocket science. But the fact is that uh, I am the information manager for governments, and you can take my words to the bank. So are you? I will not uh, lie with a lie. On, I will not die with a lie on my lips. No, we're not. This we're not um, speculating your position, but we're just asking for transparency's sake. Would you be willing to uh, make that document public? It is need. All right. Well, in your release this morning, you made mention to uh, the fact that in the interim, the River State government has provided an alternate, an alternative venue for the House of Assembly to conduct their affairs. That's pending the rebuilding of the complex. This morning, of course, while this was happening, we were made aware of the news that the budget was being presented inside the government house uh, with just four lawmakers present. Uh, and of course, in the same proceeding, 27 uh, lawmakers 
lawmakers uh, whose seats were also declared vacant during that sitting. So can you let us know where is this temporary uh, meeting place that, that, that will, uh, the House of Assembly will be uh, meeting at? Will it be Will it continue to be at government house? And secondly, with the, the res, uh, with regards to the budget presentation this morning, were all lawmakers invited? Uh, all thirty something of them were they invited, or was it just the four who have pledged their allegiance to the sitting governor? I, I don't run the business of the House of Assembly, as a matter of fact, and you know that there are three tiers. Of I speak for government of River State. I don't speak for the legislature. I do not also speak for the judiciary. So I would restrain myself to what is within the scope of my job to say that that budget had been presented to the assembly. The temporary place that you talked about is within the confines, within the vicinity of uh, the, the proximity between the bond assembly and where they sat. It's not much. And everything is government as a matter of fact. That structure was built by government. The old one that was built, that uh, was actually the first chamber, is also the, inside the government uh, premises, which is the secretariat. You know, this is the third assembly that had been built from the inception of this uh, uh, dem our democracy. The first was uh, in the in the in the seventies, and then thereafter another was built. It failed integrity test, and then. The government of uh, Peter Dili came and uh, put this wonderful edifice, which uh, had gone into ruins, together. Right. So what is your comment to those who are saying that this demolition took place in order for the 27 defected lawmakers to be unable to sit? I have no answer to it. They are, they, they are with, it's within their right to, to speculate. I am not a mind reader to know what the minds of other people are. But my own duty is to simply situate the matter or the, the, the matter the way it ought to be. People are bound. There's no perfect situation. Once anything happens, people will take their different slants to it. Even in journalism, you know, we're taught to take slants. We, we hear you. Now, we, we spoke with our correspondent, um, Andy Omano, Omano, earlier on, and he gave a sense that there is um, dis-ease uh, with among the rivers people some of them withdrawing their children from school some parents are joining the withdrawing the, the awards from schools and looking over their shoulder because of all the events that have played out from you know from this since this began up until today and when we spoke with you last time you did say that everything was going in river state smoothly and that the governance is is going on without a hitch so what steps are being taken now that it's quite glaring that things that it's no longer business as usual in River State to make sure that this is a thing of the past and um, gov real governance can begin? No, but to, to offer somebody a new lease of life, is it anything to disrupt activities of government? The answer is no. We have uh, presented a budget. We have told reverse people the reason for the demolition, and the uh, government is going ahead to ensure that uh, they, they, they fulfill their promise of trying to put the place for proper use. So I do not see it impacting on government as it were. No, I'm good. This is beyond the demolition. I'm talking about the events that have preceded the demolition in terms of the defection, the, the, the crisis between the minister of FCT and the governor of River State, it's from our reports, the reports we're getting, it's taking a toll on the people of River State. They don't feel a sense of safety. So what's going to be done since you're the commissioner of information by the River State governor to ensure that the people of River State get a sense or feel a sense of safety and go about their regular activities without looking over their shoulders? Well, I, I want to assure River's people that uh River State is peaceful. His Excellency is up and running. Government is, uh, is very caring. I can assure us that uh, the situation will come under full control. Can you give us steps that are being taken so that we get a sense that it's actually going on? There have been mediatory uh, roles going on. There are not things that we just bring to 
the public glare, but it is obvious that uh, quite uh, some very reasonable reverse people, elders, uh, taking steps. Uh, last week we had uh, we had a meeting with uh, the traditional rulers council, and uh, the chairman of the council also had uh, waded in fully. And I want to believe that uh, when we speak, I'm sure the younger ones would hear. Now, still keeping with the theme of governance, uh, earlier, of course, you made mention to the fact that the budget has been presented, and this was done to four lawmakers. Is this acceptable to you? Uh, out of over 30, uh, just four present, is this an acceptable to you, a satisfactory and a successful budget presentation? If the assembly that is a lawmaking body, presided over by a speaker, who got... Um, uh, the ruling from a court on uh, an ex parte motion could preside over an assembly. It would mean that uh, by their house rule, they qualify to carry on the business of the house. They may qualify, but do you th consider it a successful outing? Why not? There was no chaos. I was there. I saw proceedings. And there were there, there were other journalists. In fact, it was a, a media blitz, and uh, I, I would I would assume that uh, it went well. Okay, because uh, from the visuals that we see before us, it seems there are more journalists than lawmakers. I didn't take uh, stock of. Uh, I didn't, okay, the visuals I didn't are before us count. now. No. Uh, there's no Which need to was. do a head count. Four people is relatively obvious versus a room filled with journalists. All right, well, we've been in conversation with the Commissioner of Information for River State, Mr. Joe Johnson. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for bringing clarity to this uh, very, very pertinent issue taking place today. Mm -hmm.